My goodness gracious, could the race be any tighter in these battleground states? Look, in the Great Lakes, you got Harris by two in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, well within the margin of error. How about in the Sun Belt, though? It's even tighter. You got a one point race in Nevada favoring Kamala Harris. You got a less than one point race in North Carolina, Trump ahead, but we're talking about like 0.2 percentage points. Arizona, a one point advantage. Georgia, a one point advantage for Donald Trump. The race, very, very close. Now, let's just say the polls were exactly right. What does that mean for the electoral map? Well, it would mean a really tight race. Look at this, Kamala Harris getting 276 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 262, mostly on the basis of winning these Great Lake battleground states, despite the fact that Trump carries three of the four Sunbelt battleground states. But the bottom line is, Kate Baldwin and dear audience, this race is tight, tight, tight. Now, in the realm of playing the hypotheticals, yes. so let's do that. Yes, I um, love those. It, comparing how, if, if, if the polling is off, if the polling is off like it was in 2020, what would that do to the electoral map? So look at Donald Trump's electoral vote total right now if the polls are exactly right, 262. But let's say the polls are off like they were back in 2020. Look where he goes. He goes to 312. Why is that? Because the polls underestimated Donald Trump in 2020. So the bottom line is, instead of losing those Great Lake battleground states, he wins all of them. He obviously holds on to North Carolina, Georgia, and Arizona, and he gains Nevada. So if the polls are as good as they were in 2020, despite the fact that at this particular hour, Donald Trump trails in enough states to give Kamala Harris the victory, if the polls are off like they were in 2020, Donald Trump would actually win the election. All right, guys, so we got to talk about this undecided voter panel that was done by Daily Mail. Now, I'm not sure why anybody at this point would still be undecided, especially when you listen to the so-called undecided voters talk. I'm almost like, why are you undecided, right? If you're thinking rationally, you should not be undecided because the choice should be clear, okay? And you're going to kind of see that in this clip here of these undecided voters who happen to be black, okay? So that's important because these voters are from Georgia, okay? And Georgia is a swing state. It is a very important state for Trump to win uh, up, coming up in this election and the black voter population in Fulton County, uh, that's a huge portion of the population in Georgia that votes and how they vote could determine the outcome of the election, okay? So when you listen to these black voters, okay, who are undecided and the way they talk about Kamala Harris, to me, in my opinion, if they are thinking rationally about their vote, which it sounds like some of these people are, uh, then the choice is clear, okay? And it's not Kamala Harris. So without further ado, let's get into it. But hands up, was the economy better under Trump or is the economy better under Biden and Harris? So hand up if you think the economy is better under Trump. And hands up if you think the economy is better under Biden and Harris. Right. Okay, 7-1. That's pretty, pretty clear. Is it true? Firstly, I just want to ask a general question about Harris. Then we're going to show some clips for the debate. What's your biggest hesitation about voting for Kamala Harris? Just is she going to be able to do the things that she says she's going to be able to do? That's, you know what I mean? Just, is she going to be able to do it? That's my big conversation. Just, is she going to be able to get it past Congress? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Yep. You know? Well, the answer to that question is no, right? I mean, Kamala Harris has been a failure, absolute failure, when it comes to anything that she is involved in. Like, for example, she was tasked with going overseas to Ukraine to stop Russia from invading Ukraine, and she failed, okay? We all know what happened with that. Uh, she was tasked with being the border czar, and she failed. We all know what happened with that. Also, Kamala Harris has led uh, projects from the Biden administration, infrastructure projects, like, for example, uh, internet connectivity, broadband for rural America, $40 plus billion dollars spent, and nobody has been connected to the internet. The Biden administration has spent billions of dollars on electric charging stations for federal highways, and they've only built like seven or eight. So to answer the question about whether or not Kamala Harris can get it done, the answer to that question is no. If you look at her track record, she has a track record of failure, okay? And you know, these people have already acknowledged that under Trump, the economy was better, things were better. Um, and at, in my opinion, there's not much else you really need to consider, right? I mean, you should be undecided at this point. 
Okay, you should be undecided. The choice is clear, and it's not Kamala. Mikhail, how about you? Everything that glitters ain't gold. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Very, it looks great on paper. Mm. Yeah. But I'm not sure it could translate to politics, and if she'll even be able to get it passed. Hey, what? My thing is her, her strength, and um, that's my focus for her. Um, you know, is she going to be able to take a punch and give one or two backs? You know, I, I, that's my biggest thing. And it has nothing to do with her gender, gender, ladies. Okay. But you have, did, we talking about the highest office in the land. Yeah. And if it was can, Michelle Obama, I would you feel can, totally different. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can't be that's weak. What I'm you can't be weak and hold that over. Yeah. Like if you put her next to a, Michelle Obama, it's like or Hillary Clinton, or, or Hillary Clinton. It's like it's no comparison on the strength that I think it, Michelle Obama or Hillary Clinton would have against her. They would, they would eat her up. How did wow, <laughs> wow, Michelle Obama or Hillary Clinton would eat Kamala up? Wow, wow. I can't say I disagree. I I don't disagree. I actually think when you look at strength the strength of somebody like kamala harris versus hillary clinton versus michelle obama yeah i definitely think that michelle obama and hillary clinton uh give off the illusion of strength or being stronger more than somebody like kamala harris okay kamala harris has proven thus far that she is a weakling right that is my number one takeaway when i hear kamala harris speak uh the fact that she's avoiding interviews she's avoiding any type of adversity uh, she's avoiding hard questions, right? She's dodging Fox News while Trump is out here dodging bullets. There is no comparison in regards to who's the stronger candidate, right? Trump is the stronger candidate. And I think that Kamala Harris is a historically weak candidate, to be quite honest with you. But again, I'm glad I'm not the only one that's seeing this, right? I mean, when I see Kamala Harris, I see weakness. And she's not somebody I trust on the world stage to negotiate with Vladimir Putin, Xi Jinping, Kim Jong-un, I, I don't trust her to negotiate with any of our foreign adversaries because she can't even handle a CNN interview, right? I don't see how she can handle a meeting with Putin. I really don't. Uh, and again, we already know that, that she's failed when it comes to her diplomacy and trying to prevent Putin from invading Ukraine. Harris come across then. How did she do up against him? Uh, Hayward says that, you know, big personality. How did she do? How did she come across? She kept saying that she's a warrior and she's going to fight, but I don't know if you're a strong ass. I mean, I get it what you feel, but wow. I don't think you could, you are as like a warrior, like fighter, like she right. says she is. Right. Right. That's just my opinion. Not that I don't think she doesn't care. And like I said, she used a lot of appealing to emotion, like uh, anecdotal, like, um, or like, yeah, anecdotal evidence instead of like, you know, she do some facts, but just like to like, appeal to people like hey you know i'm just like you know to try to get people on her side mm -hmm. oh i don't think the bar was set pretty high when it comes to that uh when it comes to her speaking i believe uh the last one the last debate with biden set it really low so i believe she did a lot better than biden but um that's that's pretty much what i got in them they're both old and uh, biden is old trump is old and we need we need to get some young folks in there that that, really that, that that knows you know have an idea of what's she going on now. So that's my opinion. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was several times where he kept like referring to her as dang. Like he almost didn't even address her. Like he kept saying he goodbye. He didn't say, say her name at all. Yeah, or like, that's your boss. <laughs> Basically, so that's your boss. Was, like yeah. you're just doing what Biden and it, wants to do. Yeah, yeah and he does make you wonder, right? Because it's kind of like he's saying stuff like y'all just ousted him. And I'm like, well, that's not what happened. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, what if that is what happened? And like, now she's the figurehead, you know, so it's difficult to jump on board 100% because you do kind of like you've seen it. We've lived through now, you know, multiple elections and we've seen how they turned out. So as a person, I do think she's a better person than he is overall character wise. Um, and that's why, you know, more people, I think, are leaning towards her. I don't know if that 100% means she'll do a better job in the office. Again, yeah. So these people that <laughs> believe that there is some type of uh, advantage for Kamala Harris when it comes to character, right? I, I think of silly people because there's nothing about Kamala Harris uh, that makes me think she has a better character than uh, President Trump, right? Uh, and the reason why is because 
all of these politicians are slimy and they're dirty, right? In order to reach the top, the pinnacle of politics, you got to be slimy. You got to be dirty. Uh, you're probably not a great human being, right? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So I, this is why, you know, I'm not really into the character conversation. What I'm really into uh, is the results conversation, right? I'm not into the age conversation as much as I'm into the competence conversation, right? It doesn't matter that Trump is older, but what I do know is that Trump is competent because we've seen him competently run this country under his administration. We haven't seen that under Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We haven't seen that from Kamala Harris as a, as a senator. We haven't seen that from Kamala Harris throughout her whole career, to be quite honest with you, because even in the beginning of her career, the beginning of her career, things were given to her on a silver platter, right? Willie Brown's girl, okay? Came in, got a bunch of jobs she wasn't qualified for uh, simply because of her relationships and her connections, not because of her abilities. And I think that Kamala Harris has just been getting by. I think she's been faking it until she makes it. I think she's willing to be whoever she needs to be in the moment in order to get a vote. She'll say whatever to get a vote. And we all know that. She'll lie to your face. So don't sit and try to tell me that she has better character than somebody like Trump. At least with Trump, you know, you can say what you want about the guy, but he says his mind, right? He's speaking his mind. You know that when he's speaking, he's speaking what he actually thinks. And that could change from time to time, but I don't have to worry about him being fake. I don't have to worry about him trying to deceive me, right? That is something that you do have to worry about with Kamala Harris. And you're seeing that come through in this interview. These people don't trust her. They don't trust her at all because she's not authentic and everybody knows that she's fake. Everybody knows that you can see it in this interview. They're very skeptical of her, but I, I kind of feel like a lot of these voters, because they're black, they're probably lifelong Democrat Party voters, and they're just having a hard time just letting go, right? They want to let go, but a lot of them just can't, right? They just can't for whatever reason, and it really is a shame. But they're, you know, at least for the most part, they're thinking through this, and they're seeing through the fakeness of Kamala Harris, they're seeing that she's weak. They know that it, they got better results under Trump. I'm not sure why he's still undecided. I don't understand. Final question on Harris in this debate then. From what you've seen so far, pick your hand up if you think she's strong enough. Keep your hand down if you've got doubts whether she's strong enough. So put your hand up if you think Harris is strong enough. Yes. Barely. I think she's strong enough. Yeah, just like enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just enough. Yeah. None of these people are confident. They're raising their hands, but none of them are actually really confident, 100% confident that Kamala Harris is strong enough to be president of the United States. Strength is that strength that everybody see in the beginning. Is it going to last throughout her four years? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, yeah. she, you, she, she looked good against Mr. Trump. I don't know. I didn't see it. But when you have to face these other leaders from these other countries, you know, are you going to have what it takes? To stand there and throw punches like they throw a punch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing more doubts even from those in the <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think, so. I think she's strong enough. Just, just enough. Now. Yeah. So this is terrible for Kamala Harris, right? If this is what undecided black voters think about Kamala, uh, yeah, that, that's actually a really, really, really bad sign. But a lot of these people, they're going <laughs> to... They're going to lot up and vote for her anyways, okay? Because, again, they just default to voting for Democrats. But, again, if they are rational thinkers, right? They're rational voters, which is the big if, okay? You know, that's the thing I forget about, you know, from taking these economics classes in uh, in college at UNC, right? Uh, it only works, right? The theories only work, right, for the most part, when you assume that people are rational, right? They, they, they're rational behaviors uh, when people are engaging in the marketplace. But then... You have to account for the fact that a lot of people aren't rational, right? So they're not going to make rational decisions, right? So again, you, you always have to keep that in mind, right? These people, you know, you listen to them talk, it's like, bro, th there's only one choice, but then they'll turn around and, and make the choice that they shouldn't make, okay? Because they're not actually making decisions rationally, right? They may be thinking about the situation correctly, but when it comes down to that final decision, especially women, uh, they're going to vote with their emotions, right? And I'm hoping that's not the case with these people, but likely it will be the case. So you can't get too excited about stuff like this. It's just a shame that people can clearly see how bad Kamala Harris is and they're still going to line up and vote for it anyways. I'm hoping that these people don't, but you know, I just don't have much faith and hope in some of these black people uh, in places like Atlanta 
just for obvious reasons, right? Because of historical reasons, uh, these people still vote Democrat despite the Democrat Party uh, being an epic disaster for everybody in this country, really, and especially the last four years. But I hope, right, that ultimately they make the right decision, okay? So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a Black conservative perspective. Peace.